Let's learn how to query a GraphQL endpoint with Go. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by today. My name is Brian Morrison. I'm a full stack developer and content creator here on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can query a GraphQL endpoint using Go without having to generate a full client library, which can be very useful if all you need to do is just grab a little bit of data. Um, if you're into this kind of content, do me a favor, like and share this video and give the channel a subscription and um, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev if you're interested in learning more about uh, building serverless applications. And with that, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the main landing page of the Hashnode GraphQL API. It's how you, what happens when you go to api.hashnode.com forward slash GraphQL. We're going to start by uh, typing out a query inside of here just to get some data so we know how to structure our object inside of Go. So I'm going to open a set of curly brackets. I'm going to type in user and then pass in the username parameter of Brian MM Dev since that's my username on, on, uh, on Hashnode. Open another set of curly brackets. We will then type in publication because this is the object we want to get. And then we're going to get the posts from that publication. And finally, we're going to get the ID of the post. We're going to get the title and then we're also going to get the date added. OK, so I'm going to run this just to see what comes out. And then this is an example of what the data looks like when it comes out. So what we're going to need to do inside of Go is create a struct to hold this data. So I'm going to copy some of this and bring it over to VS Code. OK, so before we write any code, I've got a folder open inside of VS Code and I've got a terminal open. We need to initialize the project and then we're going to go ahead and install the necessary um, library that we need to execute queries to the GraphQL API. So I'm going to say go mod init go hyphen GraphQL hyphen client hyphen demo because that's the name of the folder. I'm just going to match that. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in go get hyphen u and then I'm going to say github dot com forward slash machine box forward slash GraphQL Hit enter. So we've installed our package. OK, so here's an example of that response object. And we're going to start by creating a struct. OK, so we're going to say we'll say type query user response. And that's going to be a struct. And then we're going to type in user as the first um, field of our struct. And it's important that these are all uppercase since if they're lowercase, they're effectively private and they won't be able to be marshaled data into. So that's going to be a struct as well. Now let's type in publication, which is also a struct. And then we're going to type in posts, which is an array of structs. And the definition for that is going to be ID and that's going to be of type string. Now, the only thing we have to do for the ID is we have to define, we had to have the JSON tag here, our attribute, because um, it's not actually ID in the JSON, it's underscore ID. So we need to tell the JSON marshaller what uh, what it should be. And then we're gonna set a title of string and then we'll say date added is also a string. Now, since because, because date added is just a lowercase here, it should be able to parse out just fine here. So I'm gonna save this so far. And then now we can start pulling in uh, or writing the code rather to execute the query against GraphQL. So I'm going to create a new client and that is going to be GraphQL dot new client. HTTPS colon slash slash API dot hash dot com forward slash GraphQL. And when I save this, you'll see that this package GitHub dot com forward slash machine box forward slash GraphQL is automatically pulled in. So now we can define our query. We're going to type, create a new string variable that is a type query. I'm going to use the back tick so I can create a multi-line string. So then I'm going to go ahead and paste in the query that was used inside of the Hashnode API or the Hashnode uh, tool that we used to test the API. We're going to create a variable called request and we're going to say GraphQL dot new request and then pass in our query object here. And then finally, we need to create that um, the instance of our query user response object in order to store the results of this. So I'm going to say var response query user response. And then finally, we're going to create an error variable to store any errors that are uh, spit out by the, the client and then say client.run. We got to give this a context. So I'll say context.background, pass in the request, and then finally pass in a reference to the response. So this way, the client will uh, convert all of the strings that come in, all of the, the data that comes in from the API into that response. So then let's just go ahead and check this. I'm going to type if ERR, which is a shortcut I have here, and then we'll panic if there is an error, just so this way we can get something spit out to the terminal. And if not, we're going to loop over the response, over the posts that come back from the Hashnode API and then just uh, print them on the console. So I'll say for underscore EL equals range 
user, or I'm sorry, response.user.publication.posts. So we're gonna loop through this. We don't need to worry about the index. We just wanna grab the actual element of the slice. Log.println, el.title. So we will grab the title from that post and then print it out to the, the console. Okay, so I've got my integrated terminal up again. Let's go ahead and test this by typing in go run with a period. And it looks like everything works successfully. We indeed have a title that's being printed out to our command line. You should now have a good understanding of how to query a GraphQL API in Go. If you're into software development, specifically in serverless and Go, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, and follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.